Hi, I'm Dr. Zachary Rubin. I'm a board certified allergist practicing in the western suburbs of Chicago. And I'm gonna to talk to you about three of the strangest things that you could be allergic to that I've come across in my practice. On this channel, I talk to you about all things allergies. So if you want to learn more, like and subscribe for more information. The cases I'm gonna to talk to you about, I change some of the details to make sure that privacy is maintained. So let's begin. The first case involves a young man who was playing basketball one day and ended up getting hives, wheezing, shortness of breath, and vomited while playing basketball. He was taken to a local emergency room and identified as having a severe, potentially life-threatening allergic reaction called anaphylaxis and needed epinephrine for treatment to reverse his symptoms pretty quickly. When he came into my office, we did an extensive workup in terms of evaluating for environmental allergies as well as food allergies, and it turned out that he had a test that was positive for a wheat allergy. Now, he's been eating wheat all the time and not having any issues, but it turned out that that day when he had that severe allergic reaction, he ate wheat about two hours prior to playing basketball in the form of a sandwich. And so it turned out he had something called food-dependent exercise-induced anaphylaxis. That's a large term there to basically describe that you can be allergic to a food, but it only manifests as a severe allergic reaction if you exercise within four to six hours of eating that offending food. In this type of situation, it's important to have a buddy when you exercise and carry an EpiPen or an epinephrine auto-injector device at all times to prevent potentially a fatal reaction from occurring. It doesn't mean that you necessarily can't eat that food in the future, but it's best to avoid exercise for at least four to six hours after eating that food. Okay, if you're finding that interesting, again, hit that subscribe button to learn more about allergies. Now let's move on to the next case. The next case involves a middle-aged woman who came into clinic complaining of having hives almost every single day during the daytime when it was sunny out. So this was happening mostly in the summer and almost never happened in the wintertime. I suspected this patient had a rare condition called solar urticaria, also known as being allergic to the sun, because of the fact that their main exposure was sunlight. This can be very difficult to manage because even if you give them high doses of antihistamines, which can help treat hives, they can still have breakthrough symptoms. And it's not a good idea to completely avoid sunlight because it's a really good source of vitamin D and it helps with mood. So what really helped this patient was actually having them take a biologic medication called omalizumab, which helped stabilize their mast cells, which is the culprit in this type of case, and their symptoms have been almost under complete control. Now the last case involves a teenage girl who develops hives every single day, and she reported that her symptoms were due to being submerged into water. And so over time, she had a hard time bathing because of the fact that any time that she was submerged for more than a few minutes, she would get very itchy hives throughout her entire body. And so this was not something that was dependent upon temperature. So if it was cold or hot, it didn't matter. It was contact with the water on her skin that was causing these issues. So when I had her in clinic, I put her arm into room temperature water for about 10 to 15 minutes. And when we removed that arm, hives were all over her arm. So she had something called aquagenic urticaria, which is basically a water allergy. Fortunately, this did not affect her when she would drink water, but it was very difficult to treat initially because high-dose antihistamines did not help. But that medication, omalizumab, helped put her symptoms into almost complete control. This is a very rare condition, and not everybody has similar success stories to this person. Some people still struggle despite taking a lot of medication, and it can be very debilitating. I'm happy that my patient has done well with this, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the case for everybody. So I hope you really enjoyed these three cases and learned something about some rare diseases. If you have further questions, leave it in the comment section and like and subscribe for more information. Have a great day.